and let me start getting ready for it. But in any event, we'll find out as uh, the days go on. Our number here, 1-800-572-8255. We're talking about culture shock, words, phrases, expressions that you heard in other places uh, away from your home base. And sometimes you just don't understand them at all. Or sometimes you just kind of smile and shake your head. That's what we're talking about. And we'd like to have you jump in here and join us. We talk about everything from soda pop to run me to town to inline versus online, over yonder, up yonder, down yonder, dinner, supper, and lunch. But the only thing we agree on about the meals is breakfast. Toll-free call, gang, for no matter where you're listening, 1-800-572-8255. We're going to take care of some business. If you're on hold, we'll be right back. This is News Radio 960, the new WRFC, Athens, a Southern Broadcasting Company's radio station. From ABC News, I'm Doug Limerick. The streets of San Francisco dry for the first time in a long time, but it's still very wet in other parts of California. Here's ABC's Mary Ellen Geist in San Francisco. Doug, Bay Area residents are waterlogged. There are 4,000 people staying in shelters, homes sliding down cliffs, and we've had 29 days of rain over the past 39 days, eight consecutive days of rain. Today, the sun is peeking over the tops of buildings here in the Financial District. People are celebrating. For the first time, they don't have to carry their umbrellas, but another storm is on the way tonight. That means more rain and wind and flooding and mudslides and misery, speaking of which... Some folks in Kentucky and West Virginia still snowbound after last week's storms, up to four feet of snow in some places. Doug Shelton, an emergency services official in Kentucky. We have at least made the physical contact with all of the residents of Macquarie County. However, that's not to say we can get we could even get an ambulance there if it was necessary at this time to a lot of locations. Some West Virginians still cut off. Monica Lewinsky remains in California. Meantime, the president's personal lawyer may be going court today to try to stop the leaks to the media. Attorney David Kendall thinks many of the leaks may have been coming from the office of independent counsel Kenneth Starr. Of course, despite all the allegations, Mr. Clinton's approval ratings in the polls way up there. Here's ABC political analyst Steve Roberts. Voters have developed a very clear distinction between the private Bill Clinton and the public Bill Clinton. Privately, most Americans do not believe he's telling the truth about his relationship with Monica Lewinsky, but at the same time, they say it doesn't matter. Times are good, future looks bright, and that's more important to their daily lives than Clinton's bedroom antics. ABC analyst Steve Roberts, Defense Secretary William Cohen's in Kuwait, where he's meeting with U.S. pilots who might soon be ordered to bomb Iraq. Secretary Cohen's been trying to round up Arab support for a possible attack on Saddam. You're listening to ABC News. Telcard is taking a minute of your time to tell you about the most exciting business opportunity of a lifetime and how you can get started. A business where there's no selling required, no debts to collect, and the best part is it's an all-cash business. 800-791-0999. 800-791-0999. Find out how with a small investment you can potentially make $500 a week or more, maybe a lot more, and work part-time. Whether you're spinning your wheels or your present job... On News Radio 960, the new WRSC, 51 degrees at 11.03. The official three-day forecast is coming up. Well, we can call this weekend's UGA fundraiser a big success. Some 300 student dancers dancing around the clock at the Ramsey Volleyball Arena in that big dance marathon, and they raised more than $55,000 for the Children's Miracle Network. Well, how much might it cost to ride that proposed Athens to Atlanta commuter rail? One study puts a one-way ticket price at $5.50. Officials from the State Department of Transportation and the Rail Passenger Authority come to Athens one week from today to look at plans for the proposed railway. Estimated cost of construction, $85 to $100 million. Georgia lawmakers are working on funding. Governor Zell Miller has said he'd like to see the commuter trains rolling by the year 2002. 
New numbers on UGA enrollment. 28,687 students are taking winter classes, almost 500 more than winter quarter a year ago, about 1,000 less than were, were enrolled for this past fall quarter. Or today of one less parking area for UGA students. The parking lot at the old O'Malley's Workout Center on William Street had been used by students who paid $1 for the privilege. It's now a parking facility for employees of the Dial America Telemarketing Company. Those students will have to look elsewhere. Hunters outside Murphy, North Carolina have found a truck belonging to a material witness in the bombing of an Alabama abortion clinic. Federal agents say they will seek a warrant today allowing them to search the truck owned by Eric Robert Rudolph. And the search resumes today for a West Georgia judge who fell into the Flint River when a boat overturned. Authorities say 61-year-old probate judge Idas Robertson of Meriwether County fell Saturday from a boat in Upson County, about 50 miles west of Macon. And parents of students in a school in North Georgia are being cautioned after a 12-year-old girl died of meningitis. Health officials say parents of students at Rossville Middle School should take their children to a doctor if they get sick or have a fever. And police say the deaths of three people found shot in a Savannah home may be drug-related. An officer responding to reports of shots being fired yesterday found the bodies. And checking Wall Street at this hour, the Dow is up a half a point. NASDAQ is down a full point. News Radio 960 WRFC News Time, 1105. Are you an unpublished author? Do you have a book-length manuscript ready or almost ready for publication? Or do you know of anyone else who is an unpublished author? If so, note this toll-free number, 800 800- 237-8500. You're invited to telephone Vantage Press, a leading New York subsidy book publisher, for a free illustrated brochure. Just call this toll-free number, 800-237-8500. This brochure explains how you may have your manuscript printed and published in a matter of months. The number is 800-237-8500. Whether your subject is fiction, non-fiction, poetry, or even scientific, specialized, or controversial, this 32-page brochure shows you how to arrange for prompt subsidy publication. To get your free copy, dial 800, then 237-8500. The phone call is free. If this is your first book, you'll find this free brochure especially valuable and informative. Dial 800, then 237-8500. That's 800-237-8500. Ludlow Porch is just ahead, but first, the official three-day forecast from WRC meteorologist Kathy Francis. Plenty of clouds this morning, then the clouds should break for some sunshine this afternoon. Our high today between 51 and 55, partly to mostly cloudy, chilly tonight, low 36 to 40. Tomorrow, clouds and some sunshine and mild with a high of 55. And on Wednesday, cloudy with periods of rain, Wednesday's high 51 to 55. The probability of rain Wednesday is 70%. I'm meteorologist Kathy Francis with the official three-day forecast on News Radio 960, the new WRFC. Currently, we have mostly sunny skies and 50 degrees on South Millage Avenue in Athens. I'm Beth Larson, and you're up to date at 11.07. More news in less than 30 minutes and bullets and that once from News Radio 960, the new WRFC. The Ludlow Porch Show on the Fun Seekers Radio Network, broadcasting from the Falcon Inn and Conference Center in Swanee, Georgia. Ludlow Show brought to you in part by the Blue Willow Inn, gracious hospitality and superb southern food, by McKinnon's Louisiana Restaurant, and by Jasper Jeep. No matter where you live, your Jeep dealership is in Jasper, Georgia. The toll-free lines are now open at 1-800-572-TALK. That's 1-800-572-8255. And now, here's Ludlow Porch. Well, good morning again, fun seekers. We're glad you are with us. Great day to be alive. Ludlow and Denny, the Fun Seekers Radio Network. We're going to get right back to the phones and go to Cleveland, Tennessee, and talk to Sandy on the radio. Hello, Sandy. Hello, Ludlow. How are you? Oh, pretty good. Good, good. to talk to you again. It's been a while. Yeah, it has been a while. Yes. Um, this was a culture shock for me to come down here and some of the words they said. I moved down from uh, uh, Connecticut several mm. years ago. Mm-hmm. And one of the first things that really got to me was when somebody's phone broke. And they said, it's tore up. Yeah. <laughs> and I couldn't picture, why is that phone <laughs> tore up? I said, I thought you tore paper, uh, not, <laughs> not a phone. I stopped to get gas. Not long ago, the sign on the pump beside the one I was u- using just said 
tore up. Yeah. <laughs> that was the funniest thing. I couldn't get over that because usually it would be broke. Yeah. You know, but of, they say tore up. <laughs> out of order or broke or tore right, up. Right, yeah. right. And then there was... Um, some other ones, they used to say fixing a lot. They'd say that. and well, people, uh, people still, I say they that. They still say that. No, I do that as natural as... You know, I'm getting to the point where I'm saying that a lot, too, yeah, and I'm uh, not even thinking anything of it. Uh, yeah. And the soda was another thing. We'd always call it soda up there, uh, and it, it would get to me, you know. I said, you know, soda is all types. Down here, they call everything Coke. Yeah. And I said, well, that doesn't sound right. I mean, you go and ask <laughs> for Coke, that's what you're going to get. <laughs> yeah, but, it, but, but we also know it's not soda. No. <laughs> we didn't even say pop. We just said soda. Soda, yeah. <laughs> and another one that I've come across lately is favor. The, my daughter, you know, looks a lot like me. Uh -huh. And people would say, she favors you. Oh, and I'm really? saying to myself, favor. It never occurred to me that was Southern, but I guess it is. It, yeah. yeah. And that was the funniest thing because I said, favor. I said, maybe she looks like me. But I couldn't figure how they got the word favor. You know, I, I, it never occurred to me, that, and I say that all the time, never occurred to me that that was Southern in origin. I guess maybe it might be. Yeah, because I've never heard of it before up That's... there, except if uh, if you want a favor, you ask for a favor yeah. or give a favor or something like that. Right, now I understand that. But That's... I've never heard of it this way before. I thought That's, That's the strangest thing. <laughs> very interesting. Very... Yeah, there's a lot of differences, and even from one section of Connecticut to the other end of Connecticut, you have different. Yeah, I think that's what makes it so interesting. Yeah. You can get in your car and go 100 miles and find something new and wonderful. Yeah, you do. And, I mean, they talk they talk like New York or um, New Jersey and western end of the state. And the eastern end, you'd be more like towards Boston. Mm -hmm. So it's so many different accents everywhere you go from one end of the state to the next or whatever. Yep, and they're, and they're all unique and they're all beautiful in their own way. Most, yeah. most of them are beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, I know, except if you go to Maine. We lived in Maine several years, and their accent is way out. I mean, and we used to have a horse. They'd have horses up there. Yeah, yeah, but And I... they'd say, aya instead of yes. Yeah. Oh, it's so different, and yeah. we had a real culture shock there. Well, it is, it is different, but uh, there's an awful lot to be learned from other folks. Oh, yes, yes, there is, and they were very friendly, nice people, and we found that down here, too. I really like it down here. I'm glad you called, and we are glad you are here. You be good. Yeah, glad to talk to you. Thank you, ma'am. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 1-800-572-8255 is our number. Let's go to Dwight in Athens, Georgia. Hello, Dwight. Good morning, Ludlow. Good morning, sir. How are you? Oh, God, I love the sunshine, finally. Yeah, yeah. As a 20-year-old GI in World War II, I had a furlough in Scotland. I went to a bed and breakfast, and before turning in, the lady asked me uh, at the desk there, do you want me to knock you up in the morning? <laughs> I was afraid to go to bed. Lock the door. <laughs> <laughs> and I was teaching in uh, in Greece on a fur full ride. Uh, that was about 1958 and 59, and this is a visual joke, but I was giving a test to these teenagers, and at, uh, I had about five minutes to go on the test, and I threw my arm to the front, giving them five more minutes, and I was about two feet away from the fellows in the front, yeah. and he just fell out of the chair. I discovered <laughs> that that was a medieval hoax that, that wished the worst thing on your family <laughs> for generations. They couldn't finish the test. <laughs> there, there you were, trying to be a good teacher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Ludlow, are you going to be at uh, Willow Blue Willow by any chance on Wednesday night? Because we're going to be over there. No, I don't think so. Oh, gosh. I don't think so. I will miss you. Oh, well, eat enough for me, and I know you will. Okay, thank you. Good to talk to you. You too. 1-800-572-8255. We'll be right back. An open letter to my friend Herschel. Dear Herschel, well, it's almost Valentine's Day, and I hope you can stay out of the doghouse with your wife this year. I hope you learned your lesson and will never give her another Valentine card signed, You Demand. This year, I want you to buy her a bright red Dodge truck from Jasper Jeep, Dodge, Chrysler, Plymouth, in Jasper, Georgia. That's right, Herschel. No half-dead flowers and no candy that'll make her waist large. Now... I want you to do your haggling and your fussing at home before you go to Jasper Jeep Dodge Chrysler Plymouth because they'll just not be a part of that. And Herschel, don't try and negotiate. They're giving you the best deal since the Louisiana Purchase. Try to show a little appreciation. Now, Herschel, they're open Monday through Friday, 8 to 7, but never, ever on Sunday. And Herschel, I want you to try and remember, they're in Jasper, Georgia, not Jasper, Alabama. Herschel, 
You something else. You know that? This is Gil Gross. Does personal character matter in a president? Is this something where people say, look, as long as he's doing the job, I don't care what he does in his personal life, or is this something where you say, he li lied to his wife and family, how can I expect him to tell the truth to me? Gil Gross on News Radio 960, the new WRFC. I have more documentation of somebody else's alleged sex life than I have of my own, and that's very disappointing. Cold. Fast Track. Nagging coughs. Fast Track. St. Mary's Fast Track. Cuts, scrapes, your minor injuries. St. Mary's Fast Track. Your less expensive, faster alternative to the emergency center. Weekdays, 5 p.m. till midnight. Weekends and holidays, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. St. Mary's. A hospital and a whole lot more. Hi, neighbors, this is Ludlow Porch on News Radio 960, the new WRFC. I'm the Little Rock of Arkansas. The Smoky Mountains and across the Zone. Louisiana cooking and a watermelon vine. I'm a tall Georgia pine. Georgia's on my mind. I'm the Tennessee Waltz, and all night sings, the Florida sun, silver springs. I'm Huck and Tom, and the old folks at home. I'm Clingman's Dome. I'm Corn Tom. Let's go to Rome, Georgia, and talk to the Rome wild man, Jim. <laughs> Good morning, Leto. Hello, big boy. How you doing? Well, I held for quite a spell, but I knew I'd get to talk to you by and by. By and by. <laughs> And, um, he sparked that old gal for quite a while before he started trifling on her. <laughs> a trifling man. Uh, well, you ever had anybody bring you a mess of greens? Oh, yes. Yeah, a mess, a mess and a half sometimes. Yeah. And, of course, uh, somebody mentioned a while ago about being piled up in bed to all hours of the yeah. morning. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. You know, old boy used to preface his stories with, I, God, you might not believe this. <laughs> Sure enough, I didn't. Yeah, I was going to say, most of the time you didn't. Yeah. You ever heard of a buddy called a little fry pan a spider? No. I had a school teacher from uh, Val uh, no, from Way Cross, Georgia, called him a spider, and I haven't heard it from anybody else. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Well, I would have enjoyed the vittles a lot more if it hadn't been from Squall and Young. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I noticed people from Alabama, they uh, forge eggs. Porch eggs. Porch eggs. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, how about this one? Yeah. Laid up in bed drunk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you remember the, um, the cigarette commercial years ago? I've been smoking Lucky Strikes for now only 20 years. Yeah. I used to get made fun of with that one when I was in the Army. <laughs> Buddy. Yeah. It's beautiful, a beautiful line. You know what I wonder? I wonder how the term for jumping out of an airplane with a parachute ever became bail out. Bail out? That sounds like something you want to do with a boat. Yeah, I've heard it. I've heard it. Uh, I was more used to hearing it punch out. Yeah. Um, when I, I was working. Um, but um, I think most of the time it's get out of hell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get on. Big boy, you have a great day. You too. And uh, by the way, in Ohio, I believe the porch is a gallery. Okay. <laughs> I'll talk to you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That's all I need. Love no gallery. Somerset, Kentucky, and Greg on the line. Greg, have you dug yourself out yet? Well, I'll tell you, the snow's starting to melt off. We, we kind of live on a hill here, and as the, the snow's sliding off in a big hump, it's starting to look like somebody's been having a monster truck rally out I'm, in our front yard here. I got it's you. Taking the grass with it, if you know what I mean. Uh, I do. Uh I got a couple of colloquialisms for you, if I may. One, uh, being from Kansas, I, I came to Kentucky, and, and, and I noticed a lot of them the years ago when I came here. I don't seem to notice them as much now. Yeah. But uh, one was sprawled out, 
when somebody's sprawled out all over in the middle of the floor, you know, or uh, one that my, my uh, we get a lot around here, ain't never seen the lack. Uh-huh. Um, now, my grandpa, I don't know if this is a colloquialism or an idiosyncrasy, because I've never heard anybody else use this, but my grandpa, we used to go fishing, and he would call the sun, when it'd get beaming down good and hard, he'd call the sun, old Hanner. You ever no. heard anybody else call no. the sun old Hanner? No. Me either, so I don't know if that was just his, or if that's a... Uh, common southern thing either just his or from his family right could, yeah. be, could be either i don't know yeah but that was that that that's that's what i have was old, old hanner for you I, I've, I've heard someone here that I, I haven't heard in a while and i hear him on and I'll, I'll, I'll get tickled at some of the things uh, oh it's fun to remember isn't it yeah hey well you have you have a nice day little okay. take her easy stay oh, dry okay buddy Bye. you do the same and i hope that stuff's all gone in a little while well i hope so too you take her easy now. all right pal 1-800-572-8255 cedartown Georgia and Jean. Hi, Jean. Hi, Jean. Hi there. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, I've got a, a word my grandmother always used. All right. Life bread. Say it again. Life bread. She wouldn't call it loaf bread. Oh, okay. She would call it life bread. Huh. And I, I don't know where she got it. I never did even think to remember to ask her where she, you know, got the word life bread at. I'll be darned. But all my growing up, you know, as I grew up, I always heard life bread. And I thought, now it's loaf bread, you know. Yeah, loaf or light. Uh-huh. But um, we had some uh, visitors from uh, Rocky Face, Virginia, down. And my middle daughter, they want to take her back with them. She's grown, got a child of her own. But she's the southern to this guy, said, I can make money off of you. <laughs> I can just set you up on a stage somewhere and so I'll just get rich. Oh, that's funny. But, but just hearing your, you know, her voice, you know, her voice, she speak her words and all that, you know. Yeah, her accent, yeah. Yeah. And, but he just, it just tickled him to death. He laughed the whole time he was here at her. He said, I'm going to take you back. Oh, that's funny. But anyway, I never heard anybody say life bread, but my grandmother. No, I hadn't either. You know, the Bible says it's the staff of life. I wonder if that's where it came from. It could have been. Maybe it, it may have been. been biblical. It could have been. I'm glad you called. All right. Enjoyed it. Take, take have a good care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. More conversation right after this. Hey, gang, only one way to get to New York City. That's right. It's on Air Trans Airlines. Listen to this. All the way to LaGuardia, one-way fare as low as 99 bucks. Yes, sir. That's the same New York City that costs five times that much to fly on other airlines. Business of pleasure, you name it, the Big Apple has it. I want you to call my friends at Air Trans Airlines or your travel agent, 770-994-8258. About three rows back on the left side of this Greyhound bus is a woman and her teenage daughter. With Greyhound's companion fare, where you book three days in advance and the companion rides free, it was cheaper than driving herself. And as the bus glides over a small hill, this woman sees something that tells her without a doubt she did the right thing. It's a blue station wagon stopped on the side of the road with its hood up. Go Greyhound. Call 1-800-231-2222. Because right now, companions ride free. Some restrictions and limitations apply. Here we come. This is Art Bell. A pack of wild monkeys swooped down and attacked people passing by in a Japanese seaside town, injuring 26, biting people in the back and legs. The monkeys appeared tracking and possibly uh, beginning to stalk those who were hunting them. Art Bell on News Radio 960, the new WRFC. The home of Ludlow Porch, News Radio 960, the new WRFC. It ought to be schwer, a ganz gut, es kim der Zimmer, dann will er gut, a weg zu furnen, his day zu machen, a wissle whoopie. All right, Cleveland, Tennessee. And Dave on the line. Hello, David. Good morning. Good How morning. are you, old friend? I'm doing fine. Good. Uh, the lady caught my tore up thing there, so I'll scratch that <laughs> off. But I got a couple here you haven't uh, covered. Uh, around here, they say Prutnier. Prutnier, oh, yeah. Prutnier. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody's mentioned that. No, they hadn't. And something my mother said the other day, we were over visiting her, and they looked, he looked at my wife, and she said, you fell off, haven't you? <laughs> And uh, my wife says, yeah, I fell off. <laughs> she lost a little weight. Oh, yeah, I know that. Yeah. I, have you ever heard somebody, if they want to comment on somebody gaining weight, they say, I believe she's fleshing up some. Yeah, well, that's uh, <laughs> my, 
my mother uses a lot of that. She <laughs> says, well, the baby likes sitting in Ruth's lap because she's fleshy. Uh -huh. And my wife <laughs> looks at me like, uh, yeah. <laughs> And she, she didn't like that one. Yeah, it was a little insulting. Yes, it was. I love it. We were in New York City one time. We was like a Wendy bag and we about lost, you know. Mm -hmm. And we were walking down the street. And I stopped one of these money changers because I was getting a little low on uh, cash money and uh, maybe turning one of those uh, travel checks into cash. Yeah. And I said something to the guy, and he looked at me. He said, what country are you from? <laughs> I said, this one. <laughs> But we were in a foreign country in Boston uh -huh. back in the, uh, September, and um, uh, we were wanting to go somewhere downtown, and, and the ladies at the hotel desk will go down and take the subway, and they asked the lady at the uh, window there, she can tell you, you know, where to get off and everything like that. So we walked up and asked her where this place was, and the lady said, well, you go down and get off a of park. And uh, my wife said, what? She said, you take this train and get down and get off a of park. And my wife says, well, how do you spell that? And the lady kind of grinned. She says, P-A-R-K. <laughs> and uh, my wife says, and I said, <clears throat> I said, she's a foreigner. She can't speak the language. <laughs> well, those people around Boston, you know, you know how they are. Good stuff. Good yeah. stuff. You take care yeah. of yourself. Right, Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Right, Bye-bye. Ruby in St. Simons Island, Georgia. Hello, Ruby. Oh, good morning, Ludlow. How I'm are you? I'm certainly enjoying your program this morning. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm well. Thank you. I'm fleshing up a bit, too. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear the very beginning of your program, but I have a couple of things that I grew up with, these old sayings, and um, I don't know, has anyone brought up, like to never, I like to never get there? No. I like to never do this or yeah. do that. I was in the hospital many years ago, briefly, and the woman in an, the adjoining bed was from Canada, and the young nurse came in and in the course of conversation said something about, I like to never. And the woman was totally confused. Yeah. Did, does that mean you'd like to or you never want to? <laughs> <laughs> or so, you never have, but you always wanted to. Exactly. Yeah. Something like that. So like to never is just one we all grew up that with, I think, funny. down here. But yeah. I have another one. All right. And, it, uh, and my mother, my grandmother... Um, would say this if your shirt tail was hanging out or when you wore knickers if your one sock was down and one up or petticoat showing you can't go out looking like that you're all annie godlin no I, i've never heard that well and then i read that in a in a book up in north carolina one time where they were describing someone's home <laughs> and the other man said oh i know it's all annie godlin <laughs> <laughs> so that means it's kind of a mess or something's a, a well, I have ne That's wonderful. I have never heard that. I, d I do recall my grandfather telling me one time I was a little boy, I, and I had a terrible time keeping my shirt tail tucked in. And, uh, and the grown-ups put great stock in that. I found that out as a child. Mm -hmm. And he said, you look like you're flagging for the railroad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't heard that one, and, and, and that applies also. Your gentleman that called a little earlier about the frying pan. Yeah, the spider. They the spider. I grew up with that. The iron, the iron skillet was called the spider. I'll be darned. Never heard that. And I don't know what that or origin was, but that was very common to me. And I'll just add one other, since your last caller mentioned accents. I had a dear friend from Boston, and um, her husband was with the, um, what she said was the Hot Institute in Washington, mm -hmm. and it was the Heart Institute. I kept trying to figure out what institute I had her spell it, and here it was Heart, and she was saying he's with the Heart Institute. You know, another one that's becoming more and more common thanks to television What's that? is pronouncing the Gulf of Mexico, the Gulf of Mexico. Listen to the national weather guys. Oh, absolutely. That's uh, a good one. Well, I'm going to continue to listen in this morning. These old sayings, you could do several shows on these things, I think. Oh, yeah. And always fun. And, and the nice thing about this large spread out audience is we, you, not only do you have people living everywhere, but people who have lived everywhere. And, and pick it up. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Well, thank you so much. You take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. 1-800-572-8255 is our number. Interesting thing, they normally, uh, UPI does this every year around around January 1st, but this is from Health Magazine, from Health Magazine, and these are the things Americans fear most. You know what number one on the list is? Number one on the list is speaking in public. 
Number two is getting fat. Three is going out at night. Five, visiting the dentist. Dying. Spiders and insects. Here's one, swimming in the ocean. Fear of heights, fear of flying. And the last one, large crowds. Speaking in public, I know for the last 10 or 15 years, has always been the number one fear of most Americans. Isn't that something? Very interesting. We'll be right back. You stay with us. WRFC Athens, a Southern Broadcasting Company's radio station. This is News Radio 960, the new WRFC. Good morning, I'm Beth Larson with an information update on News Radio 960, the new WRFC. 52 degrees at 1130, the official three-day forecast is coming up. Last week's heavy rains caused only minor flooding of the Oconee River here in Athens, but the situation is much worse downstream. Some 40 families were forced to evacuate their homes near Dublin and Lawrence County, where the Oconee hit levels not seen in 60 years. The river is receding today. Parents of students in a school in North Georgia are being cautioned after a 12-year-old girl died of meningitis. Health officials say parents of students at Rossville Middle School should take their children to a doctor if they get sick or have a fever. And an Arab newspaper in London says the U.S. has given Iraq a February the 17th deadline to comply with U.N. weapons inspection demands. The paper quotes unidentified Egyptian officials. The report comes as U.S. Defense Chief William Cohen tur tours the Gulf region seeking support for a possible attack. And checking stocks at this hour, the Dow is down 12 points, NASDAQ down 4. News Radio 960 WRC News Time, 1131. <laughs> Saying goodbye to your old car can be like saying goodbye to an old friend. But the parting can become sweet sorrow if that old friend saves lives through the National Kidney Foundation's Kidney Cars Program. Just donate your old car, no matter what condition it's in, to the National Kidney Foundation. The funds will support programs in research, service, and education. Programs that can save lives. So don't dump your old lemon. We can squeeze some life out of it. We'll even arrange for a free pickup, and you might qualify for a tax deduction. Consult your tax advisor for details. For more information, call 800-633-2339. That's 800-633-2339. Donate your old car to the National Kidney Foundation's Kidney Cars Program. When you're ready to say goodbye to your old car, call 800-633-2339 and put the good and goodbye. More with Ludlow Porch is just ahead, but first, the official three-day forecast from WRFC meteorologist Kathy Francis. Clouds breaking to allow some sunshine today. High this afternoon, 51 to 55. Then rather cloudy overnight and chilly, low 36 to 40. Tomorrow, cloudy to partly sunny with a mild afternoon, high 55. And on Wednesday, cloudy, good chance of rain. Wednesday's high, 51 to 55. I'm meteorologist Kathy Francis with the official three-day forecast on News Radio 960, the new WRFC. Currently, we have mostly sunny skies and 52 degrees on South Millage Avenue in Athens. I'm Beth Larson, and you're up to date at 11:32. More news in less than 30 minutes and bullets in that one it's from News Radio 960, the new WRFC. Let's talk to Alan on his car phone. Hello, Alan. Hey, Ludlow. How you, pal? Pretty good. Good. I'm enjoying today's show. Thank you. Brings back a lot of memories about a lot of sayings you hear people say. Yeah, good. Uh, one, uh, you never notice how I haven't been listening to the show all day, but uh, we get a lot of sayings from the Bible. Mm-hmm. Like he's out there raising Cain. Yeah. And the writing's on the wall. Uh-huh. And, uh, of course, am I my brother's keeper? And the sacrificial lamb 
you know, and leading the lamb to the slaughter. Yeah. That's a lot to come up in my mind. Yeah, yeah. But uh, one funny one, uh, one I always like is, you know, being from the South, how we'll say, uh, you know, we'll say, well, would you carry me to the store? <laughs> <laughs> and if you ever say that to a person that's from the North, and they'll look at you like, you know, you mean you literally want me to pick you up and carry yeah, you to that's, the store? Yeah, <laughs> that's got to be confusing. Uh at least, at least the first time. I think once you figure it out, you're yeah. all right. But that's got to be confusing. But that's the funniest thing is watching their reaction the first time they ever hear it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I'm glad you called, old friend. Okay. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Winchester, Georgia, and my buddy, the Bumpkin. Hello, Bumpkin. Hey, Uncle Luddy, I tell you, I want you to get Denny and your mama and them and come on down because <laughs> we're fixing to eat high on the hog. All right. And, and uh, if you would, stop by the store and get us some pork full of cokes <laughs> and get some all flavor because, you know, we got these young ones here that want them strawberries. Absolutely. And if you don't quite remember the way, you know, remember you turn there at the big old tree on the old Sam Pake place to get up here. <laughs> yes, why do we understand each other at all, Bumpkin? You're right. Uh, and talking about the spider, my family called a special pan a spider. We had a little, about six inch round cast iron skillet uh -huh. that we fried eggs in. And that's what we call a spider. Now, that probably might have just been my family, but... No, they, they, that's what they said, frying pans. Yeah. And particularly the old, the old cast iron ones. Yeah. Well, we, in fact, I still got my mama's spider right now. I fry eggs in it. All right. I hope it lasts a thousand years. I that's do, too, a, and I can live to fry eggs in it most of uh, them. A piece of your childhood, that's got to be special to you. It is, and that's for sure. And bloody, I'm enjoying it thoroughly. All right, bud. You take care of yourself. Talk to you. Let's go to Albany, Georgia, and talk to my friend Andy. Hello, Andy. Hey, Leb Lowe. I'm you good, buddy. All right, sir. I wanted to share one with you. My wife and I had the uh, un unfortunate event of my wife's brother and her mother dying back around Christmas time, mm -hmm. about a week apart. We was at my mother-in-law's funeral, and we were discussing with some friends about how my wife was up under a lot of stress, and uh, she just wasn't dealing with it re real well. And uh, Albany Raider. Hello. And she, um, and uh, uh, one of our dear friends stood, stood over to the side and said, yeah, her wagon's about full. <laughs> and I had never heard that before. But you knew what it meant, didn't I you? I knew. He, yeah. so he hit the nail on the head. Yeah, I guarantee you. What a, what a, a nice way to say something. Yep. Her, her wagon's about full. And uh, I had never, I sit there and thought for a few minutes, and I said, where in the world did they come up with that from? Yeah, that's... Uh... That's that's neat. That's uh, uh, I love it when you can put an entire thought into in just a few words. Just a few words, and yeah. it summed up the whole story. And I've shared that with friends of mine since then. And and uh, it, <laughs> like you say, it says a lot. Anybody about a full wagon know what that says? Yes, sir. And we enjoy your show down here in Albany. All right, buddy. You take care of yourself. Good to talk to you. Blue Ridge, Georgia, and Lynn on the radio. Hello, Lynn. Hi. How you doing, Leslie? I'm good. Good. I've got a few. Uh, Alan already took my carry me to the store thing. I, yeah. It threw me the first time I heard that, too. Yeah. Uh, cash money. Cash money. Oh. What other kind is there? <laughs> ink pen. I've never seen an ink pencil, but give me that ink pen. Yeah, but but you have seen a safety pen. No, pen. P-E-N. P-E-N, okay. All right. Pen is P-I-N. Yeah, okay, yeah. I so they, they asked for an ink pen, and I kind of, okay, which one is that, you know? <laughs> Uh, the, the worst one, and it, I just can't get over this one because it has one too many prepositions in it. Get him to call me. Get him was get him to call me. Two, yeah, yeah the okay. two. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Get him to call me. Yeah. Get him to do this or yeah. get him. And that's all over the country. Yeah. I've never heard that. I don't think that's southern. I think that's everywhere. Is that everywhere? That yeah. too. Yeah. Because we always used to say get uh, you know have him call. Right. But have him to call me. <laughs> and another one is Yuns. What time are Yuns closing tonight? <laughs> oh yeah, that's uh, that's that's more of the uh, more of the mountain too. You get you get the mountain dialect yeah. in that, yeah. Well, that's where I am in the mountains. Yes, so. you sure are. <laughs> I get them all. All right, my okay. love. Glad you called. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. One eight hundred five seven two eight two five five Sharpsburg, Georgia. My buddy Walt. Good morning, Luddy. Good morning, big boy. Thank you for having the greatest of shows again. Thank you. Please keep it up. Listen, being raised in the Ozarks, we had an old gentleman over behind the hill that, that drove his. I mean, worked with his Johnny Popper, his John Deere tractor. Mm -hmm. And if you had an international truck or a tractor, it was a binder. 
You got that one? And everybody knew what that meant. Sure, most certainly. And and Daddy, of course, everybody around there that farmed, that, uh, that uh, butchered in the fall, that was killing time. Uh-huh. And, you know, you can take that both ways. But coming and being stationed uh, after I come back from overseas in the Air Force, they, uh, I went up to Pease Air Force Base in New Hampshire. Now, that was a culture shock for this old country boy. They really? said I talked funny. Yeah, I bet they did. Yeah, and they I did. learned what a guinea grinder was up there. What's a guinea grinder? A submarine sandwich. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then I had to learn what a frap was. And I think that's a milkshake, best I yeah. remember. Yeah. And uh, then moving down to with being with a company of the first 10 years, I lived down in Louisiana. Now, that uh, those are the finest folks in the world, but they do things a little different with the language. Yeah, they, they do indeed, but boy, is it fun. Boy, just, it, just trying to figure it out is fun. Oh, it is. It is. Hey, thanks again. I'll let somebody else talk. All right. Good to talk to you always. Yes, sir. Take care of yourself. 1-800-572-8255. Listen, I want to tell you about the place to eat when you are down south from anywhere. The Blue Willow Inn in beautiful Social Circle, Georgia. These folks, such attention to detail from the way they remodeled that place and restored that place to the service, to the food. Uh, when you walk in there, you can look at that buffet and know you are in some kind of special place. They work hard to make sure that this is head and shoulders above, and it really, really is. So the next time you got a special occasion or when you just can't go another day without some good southern cooking, you remember my buddies, the Blue Willow Inn in beautiful Social Circle, Georgia, and you tell them I sent you. Do you know what triggers a tax audit? What kind of income is tax-free? You'll know with the Wall Street Journal Guide to Understanding Your Taxes. 115 pages of valuable information to help keep your taxes in line. Learn about estimated taxes and tax planning for the future. Subscribe now and get 10 weeks of the journal for just $3.90 a week and the tax guide free. Tax time is just around the corner. So call now, 800-522-7100. That's 800-522-7100. News Radio 960. The new WRFC. Extensive coverage of events that affect you most. In Athens, Northeast Georgia, the nation and the world. The death of Diana, Princess of Wales. Timothy McVeigh has been found guilty on all 11 charges. Yes, the man's been shot. Fashion designer Gianni Versace was gunned down. I did not kill my daughter, John Bonet. We finally have justice for Ron and Nicole. I just snapped. This is News Radio 960 WRFC. So heavy topics here, gang. Just fun conversation. I'm Ludlow Porch. Join me weekdays, 10 to noon on News Radio 960, the new WRFC. All right, my Bonnie Lassie's coming home. 1-800-572-8255, Cleveland, Tennessee, and Howard. Hello, Howard. Hey, Lalo, how's it going, It's boy? going well, buddy. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really enjoying your show being from Illinois and coming right. down here. Good. <laughs> and one of the things that struck me is sorry. Sorry? Yeah, like, you know, this guy wasn't any good or yeah. something bad. He's... Oh, that's, that's big Southern. Yes, yeah, boy, he's sorry. And if you want to elaborate on that, you can <laughs> say he's as sorry as gully dirt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and another one. This old gentleman here where I work, you come in in the morning, he says, you all right? <laughs> that was good morning. He said, you all right, Harris? I said, yeah. <laughs> then how about uh, uh, Friday week? We always we always said a week from Friday. Yeah. But down here they said Friday week. Friday week, yeah. Yeah, then one other thing, let low. All right. When I first come down here, about oh, two or three blocks down the street, a guy had a nice garden. And I saw this green stuff growing up big nice doggy stuff it must have got four or five foot high and i didn't know what that was so i asked my next door neighbor he said man that's okra and see we didn't have okra i didn't know what okra was really yeah but he had a good patch of okra and one other thing self-rising flour you know you, you i don't see why everybody don't use self-rising flour but we didn't have that up there then really you had to put your salt and you know soda in it I thought, man, that self-rising flower, <laughs> it originated down here, and evidently it stayed down here. Seemed to caught on, hadn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff. Well, anyway, I sure enjoyed it, Ludlow. Keep up good work. All right, buddy, you take care of yourself. Okay. Bye-bye. Yeah, we could probably do a whole show on sorry. 
just what, what it means to be sorry. We've done it on Tacky. But we, we, we may need to do that one of these days because well, uh, to broaden that some, sorry in no account, a sorry layabout, on and on. Visiting Madison, Georgia gang is like taking a trip back in time. Let's talk to let's talk to Sunshine. Hello, Sunshine. Good morning. I'm uh, trying to are... spread cheer all over the place well, this morning. Well, good. <laughs> I wanted to say something about the spider fry pans that people are talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always heard of them called spiders if they had little feet on them. And I looked into an old American kitch, uh, kitchenware book that goes back to 1725, and it says it's skillets with three legs and long handles for cooking over the embers in the fireplace were called spiders. And they range from very small to extra large in capacity. Iron frying pan, usually with legs, also appears in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. You know what happened? The legs went away, but the name didn't. The name stuck. Yeah. It certainly did. Isn't that wonderful? And we still call them spiders in my family. So I just thought I would like to contribute that. You did point. indeed. Thank you. You're welcome. Take care. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, let's talk to uh, let's talk to Jim on his car phone somewhere in North Georgia. Hello, Jim. Good morning. How are you? Fine. How are you? Doing great. I was listening to the show coming down the road here, and uh, I enjoyed quite a bit. And there was a couple of things I'd like to add, but, but uh, <clears throat> I travel quite a bit. I I know that woman was talking about uh, Bostonians. I know the first time that I was up there. I was told to park my car in the Harvard yard. <laughs> but anyway, accents and sayings are funny. Uh, the one woman asked about life bread, I believe. Yeah. L-I-F-E. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. I may shed a little light on that. I believe it was correctly called light bread, L-I-G-H-T. Uh, I was born in 38, and I remember in Charlotte, North Carolina, where I grew up, going to the store with K-Rations uh, to get a uh, loaf of bread. Uh -huh. And back then, it was all a loaf. You took it home and cut it up. Yeah. And I think either sometime during the war, near the end of the war, or right after the war, uh, you could buy bread that was sliced. Well, what had happened, it had been sliced before the war, and with... Uh with the uh, unavailability of uh, the metal to to do it, they started. You started to have to slice it yourself, and then after the war, they went right back to it. But okay, it, but then we, for some reason, we call that light bread when it was sliced. We call it light bread. Yeah, we did too. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, but I never heard a lot life bread. No, that, that may have been just one family or one lady in that family. Yeah. But a couple of sayings I heard, I worked one summer down in uh, eastern North Carolina in 1960 during college, and the people down there referred to their children, uh, said, how many children do you have? They said, oh, I have four head. <laughs> and another thing they would say. That's a funny thing. <laughs> <laughs> but they all said that, especially the rural people. I love it. <laughs> and uh, this is in uh, Columbus County, North Carolina, Whiteville, North Carolina. Yeah. Clavel, they call it. Mm -hmm. But uh, and another thing they said, which I remember quite well, uh, when you asked, "Is uh, is is uh, George so and so here?" I said, "Yeah, he's standing uh, right over there." I said, he just come up on that red pickup up truck. <laughs> he come up on it instead of drove up on it. He came up on it. Come up on it, they would say. Yeah. Anyway, I let you. I know there's other people talking, and I uh, enjoy your show very much. Okay, buddy, you drive carefully out there. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Jasper Jeep Gang, no matter where you live, your Jeep dealership is in Jasper, Georgia. 1-800-572-8255, Spartanburg, South Carolina. And uh, let's see, I believe Jenny is on deck. Hello, Jenny. Well, good morning, sir. How are you? I'm doing fine. We finally got some sunshine. Yeah, here too. I'm, I'm pleased about that. The funniest one that I heard when we first moved down here was fixing to pitch a fist at hissy. <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid to go near my coworker and find out what that really meant. Yeah, so something you just don't want to know. Uh, no, no, this one scared me. <laughs> uh, fixing to pitch a hissy pitch. Right. That's funny. That's the that's, one she that's said. Funny. I love it. You take care. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Griffin, Georgia, and James. Hello, James. 
Ludlow. How are you, pal? I dialed 404 a while ago, and uh, I found that lesson I called 770. I couldn't get you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't know what had ever come up or not. I've heard it all my life. Yeah. You can't do this lesson. You do lesson. Some stuff. That's exactly right. And uh, that part about going to the store, my father-in-law was an old Baptist preacher. And one day we were down there, and he said, well, you run me to the store. <laughs> I looked at him. I said, preacher, it's going out fast. You run. <laughs> and I turned around about twice, and he done got somebody else to carry. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't worth explaining. <laughs> it wasn't worth. Okay, that's... I'll let you go, yeah. All right, Jay. Take care, buddy. Uh, let's talk quickly to Butch in Aiken, South Carolina. Hello, Butch. Hey, Mr. Ludlow. How you doing today? I'm good, buddy. You okay? Doing fine. Good to talk with you. Let me tell you one thing. All right. Listening to your radio show reminds me a lot of sitting on my grandparents' porch on Sunday afternoon. It's what, a real pleasure. What a hear. nice thing to say. Thank real you. Real pleasure to hear some of the conversation that goes on. I'm going to take a little different tangent All um, right. about uh, these clashes of culture. Went to a little military school over in Charleston, South Carolina. Had a lot of boys that lived north of the Mason-Dixon line come down to go to school with us. Mm -hmm. First breakfast we had, seemed like the bill of fare was uh, fried eggs, uh, bacon, toast, and grits. Mm -hmm. Of course it was. <laughs> well, we started staring one another down as the, uh, the, the northern boys started putting their grits in the bowl. Mm -hmm. And we were putting ours on our plate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they didn't quite understand that. But the looks got really perplexing as they started to put um, milk and sugar on their grits. Oh, yeah. And we started putting butter in ours. <laughs> Finally, when they, when they uh, took the spoon through the bowl, it was uh, a, a different sensation for those guys when they finally tasted the grits. Yeah. The eggs and milk. Uh, excuse me, with the sugar and milk. Yeah, that's uh, the sugar on grits. Just, I, it, it's, I get chills just watching somebody do that. Well, appreciate your show. Okay, buddy. Get call, out your hair. Call us often, buddy. Be good. Bye-bye. Listen, I want to tell you about a brand new product from the folks who brought us the allergy-free permanent electrostatic air filters called Aller Pure. Uh, twice as effective, gang. Going to get rid of those little particles that just keep you upset and sneezy with your eyes running. Now, if you already own a permanent electrostatic air filter... They're so sure you're going to like this new one that they will deduct the price of your current filter from the cost of an Allerpure filter. And if you don't already own one, you still qualify for a special introductory price. Just call them right now and be sure and tell them the Fun Seekers Network was where you heard it. You get a 25% discount. Owe this to yourself. Owe this to your family. This will give you a cleaner house. 1-800-724-0767. 1-800-724-0767. You do that today. This is important. And you tell them Ludlow told you to call. Dr. Joy Brown. I am 22 years old right now. When I was 18 at the end of my sophomore year in college, I failed out of school. So what have you been doing for the last for two years? For the past two years, they send me tuition checks. And to keep the charade going, I've been cashing them. You didn't tell them that you flunked out? No. How uh, much money do you owe your parents at this moment? 7000 a semester. Four semesters so far. You have to pay them back $28,000. Those you have a great career either in politics or in prison. <laughs> Dr. Joy Brown on News Radio 960, the new WRFC. Be like to investigate one of history's greatest cover-ups. Central Command, I'm at the Bastille looking at the face of the prisoner. He might be King Louis XIV's twin as reported. Agent, I need positive face ID. Can't give you that. He's wearing an iron mask. Okay, I'm sending down a welder. The History Channel presents the man in the iron mask on In Search of History. The search is on tonight at 8 Eastern, 9 Pacific. Only on the History Channel, where the past comes alive. Oh, hi, hello. My name is Carrie, and I'm a loser. Hi, Carrie. Hi. I lose everything. Yeah. Big things, small things. Uh -huh. oh, it's been three days since I lost anything. Oh. But, well, that was my car. Oh. Do you lose things? Big things? Hi, my name is John, and I'm a loser. Hi, hi John. John. I sort of lost a 500 megabyte file off our company hard drive. Oh. Or do you just have big things you don't want to misplace? Whichever the case, the answer's the Jazz Drive from iOmega. Four months worth of work, just poof, gone. Oh, the iOmega Jazz 
jazz drive holds as much as two gigabytes on handy jazz discs. Back up your whole hard drive, store graphics, applications, your company's biggest, most important stuff, quickly, easily, and safely. We searched everywhere, my hard drive, my desktop, even the cushions of my couch. Oh, Don't be a loser. Save your stuff on a jazz drive. The super fast, extremely vast personal storage drive from iOmega. Because it's your stuff. Hi, I'm Dave, and I'm a loser. Hi, Dave. I left my boss at a rest stop. Oh. I know. Hi, this is Ludlow Porch, and you're listening to the new WRFC, and that tickles me nearly about to death. Georgia and talk to Foy on the radio. Hello, Foy. Hello, Luddy. How you doing? I'm, I've, I've got a cold today, so I'm out of work, but listening to you and enjoying it. Well, I always. hope that gets better. It's pain in the neck. I know, it? and I always love to hear you. Um, my precious mother, Southern lady that she was, anytime she'd get frustrated, the worst uh, thing she would ever say would be, oh, shoot a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> shoot a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> and I catch myself occasionally saying that. You knew she was close to the end of her rope. Right, didn't you? near the end of it. And then my husband's mother, sweet lady, precious southern lady, too, when she'd get frustrated, she'd say, Old foot. Yeah. Old foot. Yeah, I grew up with that myself. Right. My daughter, I heard her this uh, last night uh, saying, Old foot. And I thought, Oh, that sounds just like grandmother. That's right. <laughs> the generation's living on. Right. Well, I we love, love you, Luddy. Bless your heart. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you All soon. Right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Let's go to Norman Park, Georgia, for Michael. Hello, Michael. Hey, Lola. How you doing all right? Doing good, buddy. How about you? Pretty good. This is one I've been meaning to call you in a lot of times when you have this topic. All uh, right. Something my mama says that uh, I don't believe I've ever heard anybody out of the family say, if, you get, if you've ever gotten stung by a wasp and you swell up, mm -hmm. she said, well, that thing will be better once it swages down. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty certain that came somewhere back in time from the word assuage. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it just got somebody apparently smart enough to know that word came through town, and everybody else just remembered the oh, that is. the uh, swage part. But she, she broke her arm one time, and she was saying, that, yeah, it swages down pretty well now, but... I've never, ever heard that, and I bet you if we checked back on that, we'd find out that was from the old English. Yeah. And and probably is exactly what you said. Yeah, may, may very well be. Like I said, I, I grew up thinking it was just normal... Uh, so later on, I realized nobody else had any idea what I was talking about if I ever said that. Yeah. Uh, one, one more, and you've probably read this, and I don't believe I've ever heard anybody say it on the show from uh, uh, Jeff Foxworthy's book, How to Speak Southern. Yeah. Have you ever heard the one, uh, you know, he'll give the phrase and then the explanation of uh, the, the phrase he gives is kerosene, cat, and hell. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, and you use it like uh, that old boy ain't got no more chance than a kerosene, cat, and hell. Oh, that's funny. With gasoline drawers on. So yeah. Uh, that's always been a funny one to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bud, you hang in now. All right. Good Thanks. to talk to you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Had a fun day today, and I hope you have. I think we may have learned a little something. And, uh, but we had fun, and we got to laugh and smile some, and all that counts. Right back with you in the morning between 9 and then, whatever else you do today, you find somebody to be nice to.
with news at the top and bottom of every hour. You're never more than 30 minutes away from the most up-to-date information on News Radio 960, the new WRFC. And Robin, good morning, Robin. Hi, good morning, Ludlow. Hi. Enjoy the show. Thank you. Uh, I had a roommate one time that was so cheap. Every time there was a, uh, the utility bill or anything that came out to an odd number, she'd always put the extra penny on my part. <laughs> and one time, after after about a year and a half of it, I said. You know, how, how come the penny's always on my side? And she said, she just looked at me with this straight, serious face and said, I can't afford it. Oh, that's so funny. So, it that was just, is so funny. And she was ready with an answer. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> like, why would I even ask? <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about 15 cents a year here. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Great story. G glad you called. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. Aller Pure Air Filters game from the folks who brought you Allergy Free. 1-800-572-8255, Albany, Georgia. And Glenn. Hello, Glenn. Hello, Ludlow. How you doing, pal? Fine. I hope you're having as good a weather as we are today. It, it's gorgeous today. It is today. One quick one that I remember uh, that my dad talked about out there. He used to be a prison guard at the local prison camp. Mm-hmm. And uh, they'd go to work about 5 o'clock in the morning, and they had a room that they fed all the guards in separate from the prisoners. And they would furnish them their food and coffee, but they had to take their own uh, little odds and ends like sugar and cream and so forth. Yeah. And he said they had a man there that would be the first one to holler for the cream every morning, and they kind of took turns of taking it. Slide it down in the little bottle that used to come in. Uh -huh. And he said they all got together and got kind of tired of it because he would never bring it. And he said one day they took and bought him a bottle of cream, poured about half of it out, and got some quinine, some free sixes, <laughs> and some different things that was kind of tasty like that, and finished it out. Yeah. <laughs> he said the next morning they slid it. He hollered, pass the cream, and he said they slid it to him. He never hollered for any more. <laughs> no, no, broke that dog from sucking eggs. I'd do that in a minute. That's funny. Uh, uh, you, you'd be amazed. It was one of the first stories we heard this morning was about the people who went out to dinner and they would steal all of the uh, all of the packets of sugar off the table and that sort of thing. <laughs> uh, that that'd be just an awful way to have to live your life, wouldn't it? Yeah, and and I I go in the restaurants now every now and then here maybe I go and eat breakfast and you can take out and I see some taking out and they ask for sugar and they don't leave till they get it never nearly a double handful of those packs of sugar. Yeah. And I know they can't put it all in their coffee. <laughs> no, no, of course But it is, it is something else. No, they probably it. got 200 of those at home. Yeah. A fellow told me the other day, this is just quick, this is, I'm sure it's a joke, he said he used to go fishing with a guy that was so tight, he said he carried a jug of water with a soda cracker, and he said when we get back home, whatever water was left in the jug, he'd pour it back in the well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I Can't thought, be too. <laughs> I thought that was getting down on it. That is, I had a, I had a great aunt, my grandmother's sister, and uh, these folks, these folks had uh, had a lot of money. But I have seen her. Uh, she married to a lawyer, my uncle Frank, and uh, uh, I've, I've seen her. They go to a restaurant, and he'd leave a tip on the table, and she would, as they slid out of that booth, she'd slide it down into a pocketbook. It was relieved with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I tell you, it's a smart thing you see. All right. Like fella said once, said you don't have to go nowhere for comedy; just watch people. Oh, that's 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 where all the great that's material where, comes from. Where it comes from, doesn't it? Keep your eye on. Them. Well, you have a good one. All right, bud. Good Appreciate to talk it. to you. Mm -hmm. Bye. We got time for a quick one with Greg in Somerset. Hello, Greg. How's it going, Lelo? Going well, buddy. How you doing? Oh, pretty good. I got some stories for you. All right. Um, I live in this house now. With two other people, and one of them, uh, her name's Beth, and she has some habits that flat blow my mind. She's right. insane. <clears throat> Trash day. She takes all the trash bags, and she, she buys, like, these big, heavy, like, lawn bags, mm -hmm. gets the trash. She'll, she sits it out on the front porch until trash day. She meets the trash truck and pours her trash out and keeps the bags. Oh. Keeps these big, heavy bags. You know, this is, this is the same woman who takes these insoles in her shoes, right? Yeah. And when they, you know how they get kind of ratty and wore out? Yeah. Well, she takes the old ones, gets them in the sink, uses liquid dial, washes them up, dries them, puts them back in her shoes, and puts a new one on top of them. Oh, that's so funny. Now, well, that's I don't nice. know how many pairs she's got in there or whatever. I guess they just kind of turned a compost down in her shoe. I don't know. Well, if you notice this woman about 6'5". <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's getting taller every day. <laughs> well, you take her easy, Ludlow. Okay, Greg, enjoy the, the call, buddy. Call us Bye. again. Tight wads there in all of our lives. Stories about it. We'd like to hear from you, hear about yours. 
wonder if there's ever been a song or any poetry written about these people. How cheap was he or how cheap was she? Somebody can get a lot of mileage out of one dollar. You jump in here and join us. 1-800-572-8255. <laughs> whatever may be on your mind. Easy as pie. 1-800-572-8255. Ever had a tight wad in your life make you miserable? Let's talk about it. Or whatever else may be on your mind. Let's go to Cleveland, Tennessee and talk to Ruth. Hello, Ruth. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Beautiful, sunshiny day. Well, mate, all your snow gone from up there? Just about it. Thank yeah. goodness. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when I was in high school, this was back in the late 30s. You could buy salt and pepper shakers, two for a nickel. Uh -huh. And I broke one one day in home economics class. And I told the teacher. She said, well, Ruth, that'll cost you two and a half cents. I thought, well, I'll take you two and a half cents. And I told my dad about it. And he knew her, this teacher. So he took a penny, cut half in two. <laughs> he says, you take this and give it to me. So I did. And everybody was real quiet because they knew what I was going to do. Uh -huh. <laughs> And I said, Miss Marsh, here's your two and a half cents. She looked and said, well, when you owe a half a cent, you're supposed to pay a whole cent. Well, that's funny. She had that one figured out. Right. And, and so did your daddy. My late sister-in-law was all the time sending money to these preachers and evangelists, you know. Uh -huh. And she gave money to the church for cushions for the pews, which was a big deal back then. Yeah. So in Chattanooga one time, this evangelist was down there. She wanted to go hear him. So I said, well, I'll take you. So when it's over there, it's passing around the boxes to take up money. And she started digging in her pocketbook, and I thought, well, now she's going to give a big wad. And she reached down, and she got two quarters and handed me. She says, Ruth, you can put these in. <laughs> I felt like two cents. <laughs> oh, man. People, uh, people. Uh, people are funny. You take care yeah. of yourself. Good okay. to talk to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 1-800-572-8255, Somerset, Kentucky, and Harold on the radio. Hello, Harold. Good morning, Ludlow. How you doing, big boy? Oh, better than this snow's getting out here. Got about an inch and a half, two inches on the ground, besides 13 inches. Yeah, y'all really had it up there. Yeah, you? boy, we really had it. Still a lot of people had electricity up here. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I was calling about my next-door neighbor back last summer. We just retired out of Indianapolis, and uh, we... Uh, Watching the lady next door, she kept hanging pantyhose up and only had one leg in them. Well, I kept looking at her, and I said, something's strange. I asked her one day, I said, hey, I said, how come you just cut one leg on a pantyhose? She said, well, I'll tell you there, Harold. She said, the uh, reason why you put the pantyhose on and you run a runner in one leg and just cut that and off, and then the next thing you uh, run a hose in and you cut that leg off, and you got to set up a new pantyhose. And boy, I said, well, how come that? She said, well, pantyhose are high, man. She said, I got to wash my pennies. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. And she went to a great deal of thought over that, didn't Yeah, you? she sure did. That's and funny. I got another guy we have, we go out and eat with all the time. And how come they always take and say they forgot their money at the house? Are they just tired or are they directing they do? Well, they sound to me they do that often. Well, about every other time. Yeah, they 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 they're, they're pulling a scam on you. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, what you ought to say is I forgot mine too. Oh, I about time to get ready to walk in the restaurant. Yeah, well, well I, I forgot my bill, folks. Oh uh, well, if you really want to scare them, wait till after you eat. Oh, <laughs> and, oh, okay, and, uh, <laughs> all right. Well, Ludlow, I appreciate you. This radio talk show, I'm thinking that we've listened to it since not a lot. But listening uh, here, it's got it's number 10, buddy. All right, buddy. You take care of yourself. All right. Thank we, you, sir. We love it. Thanks a million. Bye. 1-800-572-8255. Whatever's on your mind, we will open up our lines and just kick that around. Or we will continue to talk about the, some of the money grubbers in your life, some of the little shortcuts. Uh, this all started when we had we had a lady on who uh, uh, had written a book about, uh, I think it was called the Tightwads Handbook or something like that. Uh, and she saved money on everything. And it just looked to me like her 
Her entire life revolved around saving pennies, and I think that may be a sad way to live. Uh, I know if you had to live with somebody like that, it wouldn't take long for that to get sad. Well, I'll tell you, gang, you can still save during Air Train Airlines Great A Deal. Some of the best fares to every place they... Uh, interesting, interesting editorial today in the USA Today. Uh, and, and this is always amazing how some of these things can be so opposite. Uh, uh, it says this, they, they, are, they are lobbying with this thing. That's all you can call it. Uh, over the uh, fact that we haven't had a, a Surgeon General in three years. Do we really need a Surgeon General? <laughs> I mean, we had not had one for three years, and this is, a, this is not a big, a big post by any stretch of the mind. I think only a handful of people in the department, maybe less than, maybe less than five or something like that. Uh, uh, USA Today says the post of Surgeon General and it's best a source of common sense leadership and independent advice on AIDS, tobacco, teen pregnancies, and other health issues has been empty since 1994. With, uh, with all the lawsuits going on about the tobacco thing, uh, all the publicity about AIDS, and teen pregnancy bad, just bad on the face of it. Uh, do we need a Surgeon General? We might want to comment on that stuff. Might save a few dollars. And certainly release Congress to do more important things. Let's go to Thomaston, Georgia, and talk to Maddie on the radio. Hello, Maddie. Yes. How are you? I'm fine, you. Good, thank We're you. We're just enjoying your show. Well, thank you. Um, and talking about penny pinches. Yeah. When I was a kid, an old friend said that they was at church. And this friend of hers wanted to be real generous. When they passed the pen round, he gave her a dime. Okay, she put the dime in the pan. Uh -huh. The next week, he walked the whole country mile over to her house. He said, I came for the uh, change. What I give you Sunday, I want to make a little bit back. <laughs> Boy. I remember that from, yeah, you know, it was a little money, but it didn't really take much but a nickel yeah. to walk back for Well, and he, he wasn't short, he might have been short of money, but he wasn't short of nerve, was he? <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, we listen to your show every day. You keep it up, because we love it. Thank you. Call us again soon, 1-800-572-8255. Yeah, I, I know people. And and so do you. And maybe this is a good thing. Maybe there's a lot of money to be saved with coupons out of the paper. But I have been behind them in the line uh, when I just wished that there was no such things as coupons in the paper. Uh, and if you remember back in the days when um, when uh, the S and H green stamps and and all of the all of those stamp things were in high gear, people wouldn't shop where they didn't have them, and when they, when they had a, what they called a double stamp day, people would come from miles, from miles around. And I wonder how many of those now are sitting in bureau drawers somewhere. We'll talk about it. 1-800-572-8255 as we go to Mineral Bluff and talk to Patsy. Good morning, Patsy. Hey, how are you? I'm Adler? doing good. How you doing? I'm doing fine. As many years as I've been listening to you, I've never, ever called. Well, welcome. Finally made it. <laughs> I wanted to tell you about a penny-pinching husband. Oh, good. I knew you'd been wanting to hear one. You've been waiting for you. Well, this is my ex-husband. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and after we hear this story, we'll know why, right? Oh, yeah. All right. We were taking three children to Panama City for vacation. Only vacation now. We've been married oh, a long time. And uh, he was really tight. But we ate lunch in the, you know, the room that uh, had the kitchen facility. Mm -hmm. And we cooked breakfast there. And for dinner, we went out to old oh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. But I said, you know, one time, I'd like to eat at that Captain John's restaurant. I think that's the name of it. 
But uh, he says, okay. Now, we had three kids. All of them throwing food, and you know how kids are. <laughs> Just doing things to entertain the other customers. Make a mess. And the waitress was so sweet. I mean, she just went out of her way to be nice to us. And when we got up to leave, I said, well, aren't you going to leave a tip? He said, no, the food was too high, and I'm not going to pay it. Like it was, you know, part of the food bill. Yeah. I was so embarrassed. I decided I'll never again go on vacation with him. And I didn't. Good decision. <laughs> 18 years of marriage and that one vacation just cured me. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <sighs> that's a different story now. <laughs> well, you know, he had, uh, you were already there. You had already enjoyed the meal. And, you, and you're talking about just a few dollars more to get out of there with a clear conscience and reward a lady who had put up with with the, the children in their, in their play and what have you. Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, and, you know, back in the 60s, what was the tip back then? Yeah. But he was like that in everything, you know. Well, congratulations on your new situation. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I hope my ex-husband's listening. <laughs> uh, I will call again, my <laughs> love. <laughs> you take care of yourself. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hello, Robert. Buddy. How are you? How are you? Good. My wife, Snow, said to tell you hello. <laughs> Snow slid. <Yeah. laughs> All right. Uh, interesting topic today. And I've got, uh, I've got, uh, by the way, did you know that the Mon Monica Lewinsky scandal is Bill Clinton's way of making us forget about Paula Jones? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's just. <laughs> did you ever notice that when you go in a Waffle House, Everybody there knows each other except you. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. I was I was in one last night coming back from out of town. Everybody in there, the place was full. Everybody was friends, first name, and I didn't know so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like you're on a probationary period there. <laughs> uh, but I was good, didn't spit my food or anything, so maybe they let me come back. <laughs> well, you, you know that you've been accepted, though, when the waitress says, Hey, hon. <laughs> you know. Okay. Uh, that's pretty good. I've never thought of that, but that's true. It is absolutely true. That's and, and the waitress will holler out at somebody walking in there like it's, she's in her own living room. Mm -hmm. Hey, Billy Ray. Yeah, I like that, too. You know, I like that, too, especially when she's taking my order and her mouth is close to my ear. <laughs> you know. Hey, Billy Ray, look who let that cat drug in. Uh, I have a friend, a dear friend, a high school buddy that we're still good friends. We still live close to each other. We went to high school in LaGrange together, but he he has been known. We I, I've called him Silas Marner over the years, mm -hmm. and his wife gets a big kick out of that because she knows him well. Uh, you know, we, we, we came to Atlanta the same year, 1970, and we roomed together. And uh, so we started out each b buying our own groceries and separating them. Mm -hmm. Well, after a few weeks, it became me buying, and we weren't separating it. Uh huh. And yeah, kind of a process of evolution. <laughs> and I was on the phone one night in this little kitchenette thing, and here comes my roommate walking by me with my last two hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I was on the phone, couldn't say much, and there they go. I looked at them like I was watching a tennis match or something, just right to left. There well, you, you knew you're never going to see them again. <laughs> and so I followed this pattern for a little while, and we I, I ran a little test on him just to see what his thinking was. Remember the old Treasure Island stores? Yeah. Okay, we went to Treasure Island one night, and I purposely didn't buy anything. We went to buy groceries. I didn't buy anything just to get his reaction. And we came out to the car, and he had purchased his groceries. I hadn't purchased anything. He had been eating mine. And he said, said to me, you're not going to get anything? You know, and I, I figured, oh, he still wants separate purchasing, but we do this uh, commune thing as far as the consumption and yeah, everything. Yeah. And uh, I just kind of shook my head, didn't say anything. And then we got a third roommate 
my third roommate got home one night, and he said that the first roommate that I was talking about was sitting there eating his ice cream out of the container and looks up and says, I just love ice cream. And it was, it was, it was not his. And then... Didn't have to be his. Once he ate it, it was his. <laughs> you know, so, and then... Uh, so he got married, then I got married, and one Thanksgiving, two or three years later, they called us and asked us if we wanted to come over for Thanksgiving dinner. And the catch was, wanted to know if we wanted to split the cost. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. And then the clincher, he and, Bo and one of his other brothers had about eight kids between them. They went up to their mountain cabin one time, and the, one, one of their wives told me that they got, the, the guy, the brothers purchased the Coke, got a two-liter bottle of Coke for all of them. Total. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go, Bob. Talk to you later. Take care, buddy. All right. Visiting Madison, Georgia gang is like taking a trip back in time. Join us. How you doing, bud? Well, I have called in a good little while. Well, I've got to tell you a story about my wife's old maid aunt. Okay. She called my wife one day and said, would you mind, or she didn't have a car, said, would you mind coming by and getting my groceries? And my wife said, well, I'd be glad to, you know. So she went up there and she gave her this list that she wanted her to go to Kroger's and get this item because it was 10 cents cheaper than somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And all she wanted her to go to five different stores. <laughs> And Evelyn looked at it, and she said, Well, ain't Ollie, if I go to all these five different stores and get you these groceries, I'll save you about 55 or 60 cents. But it'll cost me about $2 worth of gas to do that. I'll be glad to get your groceries, but I'm just going to go to one store. Yeah. And her aunt said, Well, in that case, you could just forget it. Oh, that's funny. And my wife is red-headed. She said, Oh, you got it. I forgot it. <laughs> and I tried to get in yesterday about the Coke. Yeah. Have you ever heard the, the, the slogan, let's go down to the store and get a cold dope and a pack of square naps? I don't think I've heard that as a slogan, but... Uh, well, I mean, I'm talking about fellas talking amongst each other. Oh, no. Now, the, I, slo the slogan was nibble a nap for a nickel. Yeah. But we said, let's go down and get a cold dope and a pack of square naps. And, and the square naps was cheese and round naps was peanut butter. Okay, you're talking about the little crackers. Yeah, that. Okay. Yeah, nibble the nap. It was just about four or five crackers uh -huh. for a nickel. <laughs> but the square naps was cheese. <laughs> And the round now was peanut butter. Uh, you know, I still do that and didn't know what I was calling it. Well, now you you go down and get a cold oak, the back square, and, and a cold oak don't necessarily have to be a cold. It could be a double cold, a strawberry knee high, or whatever. I'll, I'll think about that. I'll think about you the next time I do that. You go down to the store and get you a cold oak and a pack of square nap, or round now if you prefer peanut butter. All right, God. Take care, buddy. All right, buddy. Good to talk to you. Let's go to Cleveland, Tennessee, and our cleaning woman. Hello there, beautiful lady. Good morning to you, Ludlow. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Good. Uh, I've got a little kitchen up there. I was kind of waiting for you to open the open it up because uh, I don't really, I want to stay married, so I'm not going to talk about the uh, cheapskate person that I live with. Yeah, that could be dangerous. <laughs> if he was my ex, then I probably would just be all over it. Yeah. I want to keep him my, my present. I guarantee it, yeah. I uh, talked about Denny was playing the Olympic team earlier mm -hmm. when he came back on. Did you hear in the news, I guess it was the day before yesterday, that they were having to call some of the skiing events off because of uh, snow? And they hadn't had them yet. I know, and I thought it was so funny. No skiing because of snow, okay. Yeah. But I guess you do need to see where you're going or you'll hit one of those slalom things. Well, well I promise you, because they, they showed some film of that, and it was some kind of coming down. It was. It was a blizzardy looking, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, the only cheap thing that I had was uh, the lady that was talking about this church collection plate. It made me think of somebody who is so cheap that they make change out of the collection plate. <laughs> and I've seen people do that. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I, I, maybe I'm weird, but I try to, I try to kind of prepare to, and bring, you know, some small bills to, to go in the in class and then some more to put in. Uh, yeah. Mine usually goes in a tile envelope anyway, but. I don't know. I just would be embarrassed to do that. It's I would. like clipping your fingernails in, in church. Yeah, I would, too. Uh, and I, I've never seen that, but I, I believe it could happen. I have seen it. But anyway, uh, back. I just want to back up to uh, 
last Friday. I didn't get to call in, but I, and I couldn't hear very well. There's one house I queen in particular where the reception is just horrible out there from the WBAC. So my girls, our power just happened to come back on about 11. So they recorded the last hour of your show for me. Oh, good. And they said that this uh, a nice lady from Rome, I think her name was Ann, called in and uh, was saying some real sweet things about me, and I thought that was real nice. And they said she sounded very nervous. <laughs> I hope she'll call back in again, because uh, we've had a lot of first-time callers today. Do you notice yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. And uh, the one guy, Mickey, I forget where he was from. The LaGrange, from LaGrange, I think. He sounded like just the kind of person you could sit down and have a nice long yeah. conversation with and just enjoy it so much. Yeah, good caller, too. Yeah. Okay, just a couple of uh, thoughts for you. All right. This is from Henny Youngman. If God sneezed, what would you say to him? <laughs> okay. Bless yourself. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's Stephen Wright. I mean, I just find more and more from this guy. He is so funny. Oh, yeah. He, he says, did you ever notice how the irons have a setting for permanent press? I don't understand. In other words, if it's permanent, why do you have to keep ironing it over and over? Makes sense. It Makes, does. That's funny. And um, he also says, anywhere is walking distance if you've got a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, that is, a, that is so funny. Yeah, it really is. You know what a bright guy he is. Uh, now, he no, doesn't, I don't think I've ever seen him in person. Uh, he doesn't look real bright. <laughs> uh, but, that, that's a trick. But he has got, he has got that mind that just, uh, it's just constantly in high gear. I bet if you got a look at his eyes, you'd see you'd see the intelligence flashing behind yeah. there. That that whatever persona he puts on, it doesn't look too bright. It's just a trick. Yeah, no, he wears a hat and mm -hmm. and uh, no, he do, he doesn't look like the brightest guy, but he is. And uh, here's one from George Carlin for you. There'll be a rain dance Friday night, weather permitting. <laughs> That's kind of like you were talking about uh, the psychic network going broke or whatever it was. And yeah. why didn't why didn't one of those psychics warn them about it? I fell on the floor that day. Yeah, they had two thousand. You think? I, one I was thinking I couldn't call in that day, but I thought, oh, that is so funny. I was just falling all over myself laughing. You think one of them would have said something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't want to lose their jobs. I guess. They I were guess. Hanging around until they. Uh, that, there was another. Oh. Oh well, I'll think of it again. I heard a commercial the other day for some kind of some kind of a seminar that struck me just as hilariously funny, and I was driving, could not write it down, and it was so funny. I hope I hear it again. If I do, I mean, it was a real seminar, and uh, but the way they worded it was just hilarious and so. Oh, I can't even describe it, but it, maybe it was only me. Sometimes it'll, it is just me. It'll come to you, but sometimes, <laughs> yeah, sometimes that's all that's important, just yeah. you. But I love to share it and, th and see if it is just me, yeah. you know. But then when I don't and nobody else laughs, it, it's kind of bad. But uh, I'm used to that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Well, it's been, this has been such fun today. We have had some real foot stompers today. Oh, we really have. Some of these stories. So. Some we'll remember for a long time. I'm been some good you. ones. Been I'm some good ones. You. Well, it's it's finally lightening up up here, and uh, well, I can't really say it's sunny, but it's not as cloudy as it was. I'll put it that way. Well, it is bright sunshine here, and I know I'm going to jinx everything when yeah. I say that, but it is. Well, they're calling for us to have more rain here, and I'm just so tired of it. I don't know what yep. to do. Here too. Here too. Well, anyway, spring's you, coming. You take care of your All sweet right, self. I'll talk to you another I'll, day. I'll talk to Bye. you. One eight hundred five seven two eight two five five. More right after this. Oh, I know, Denny. Thank you. April 23rd. Check that on your calendar for. Hello, big guy. How you doing? I'm doing good, old friend. You doing all right? <clears throat> doing fine. Good. Now these guys in the National Guard in the post office here in Winder, I know who I'm talking about. All right. If you ever see anybody that's got the billfold with a rubber band around it uh -huh. or a handkerchief around it, they tie it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Don't want to get any, even want to get any fingerprints on it. <laughs> That's right. And I got a I got a customer that trades with me on a regular basis, <clears throat> and this man has got more money than a show dog can jump over. Uh -huh. <laughs> and he calls me twice or three times a month, and he says, "Do you have a used chain off of someone's chainsaw that you'd sell me real cheap?" <laughs> and I'm telling you. This boy's got deep pockets, but he's got short arms. Yeah. Do you, do you ever have anything like that? <laughs> Occasionally. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I had another guy told me one time he was he was talking about his son, how much money he made. He said, my son makes $100,000 a year. And he brought a, a piece of equipment in to me to be repaired one day. 
he said, uh, now this belongs to my son. I said, you're not going to charge him too much to fix it, are you? Oh, that's funny. It is. Isn't it funny how situations can can change when they're trying to con you into something? Right. If we ever have a, if they ever put being tight in the Olympics, Winder, Georgia, will win all the gold. Is that the home office? Yeah. That'd be it. <laughs> That's the home office. <laughs> That's true. All right, big boy. More to come. Listen, watch your chains. <laughs> they're, they're out to get you. I know it. I'll talk to you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Air Tran Airlines, gang, it is something else. 1-800-572-8255, Gainesville, Georgia, and Tony on the radio. Hello, Tony. Good morning, Ludlow. How you doing, bud? There's a little distortion because I live under high tension lines. Well, so you're sounding all right. I hope you can hear me. Yeah, you hey, listen, I, most people in this world have long arms and shadow pockets. Yeah. Hey, listen, I got a bread recipe for you. A bread recipe? A bread. Okay. You make your own bread, you know. Yeah. Uh, go get you some cream of wheat, wheat germ, uh, wheat tina, cream of rice, oat bran, oatmeal, of course, the flour, you know. Go get you some cracked rice, some cracked barley, and some other stuff you want to put in there. And your yeast, of course. Or you can make it like cake with some raisins in it, you know. Uh-huh. And, uh... The stuff we've got on the market for bread is such a rip-off. The only thing I buy is Roman meal, and it's still, you know, not as good as uh, it could be. You don't, you don't let me buy just a loaf of plain old white bread? I for do, sandwiches? but I can't. That stuff is, I mean, uh, darn. Well, I don't know what, I don't know what happened there. Tony, we uh, lost you. Take care, take care of yourself. We'll talk to you again. Uh, that doesn't sound like my idea of bread. That sounds, you know, if somebody wants to be healthy, you just don't eat bread. <laughs> You put all that stuff in it and it throw it away, Tony. One eight hundred five seven two eight two five five is about two or three inches in Kentucky, which is good on them. They have had some. Or we can continue to talk about cheapskates, tight wads, nickel nursers, penny pinchers, and money grubbers. There's one in your life or you know one. Your boss, the office manager, the husband.